Christmas and a bro fist to you all, you wonderful people. And I hope you've had a tremendous week as we have once again reached that pinnacle of the week, which is Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. here in the UK, which is time that we sat down and we had ourselves some drama time. Some stories sent in from across the globe, especially on the internet, of the weird and wonderful things that go on behind the wonderful keyboards that we are provided with in the land of mice. Not rats. Rat free. We've had another awesome week as we have done Warframe's new Divari Paradox, which is fantastic if you're a new player and looking to get into Warframe or have been put off because it's got years and years of content and you're not exactly sure where to start. They've done a whole new player experience and it is considerably better uh, than when I played it earlier on last year. I believe it was. Uh, we had checked into that and we have reached the next raid wing in Guild Wars 2. We have completed the Path of Fire story. We have begun the Living World Season 4, and we are now ready. We have reached the point which Raid Wing 5 will begin on Monday. On Monday, we will be in Raid Wing 5 and beginning our final journey, which is what I just discovered before drama starts today, of the final three Raid Wings that were ever made for Guild Wars 2 and likely to be ever made, unless something changes in the not-too-distant future. We shall have to wait and see. I believe, as of counting, it has been 1,410 days since uh, Arena Net added a raid as they transferred over to a strike system, which is all part of our Project MMO. And following that, we will be jumping into Destiny 2 once again. I have nearly finished the campaign. I have two missions to go through Lightfall. I have listened to every line of dialogue. <sighs> I'm almost there. And then we can get into King's Fall. Uh, King's Fall will be the next raid there. And followed by Blue Mage over in Final Fantasy XIV. We will be playing some Blue Mage. And of course, we have WoW 10.1. And the live letter for the next big FF14 content update will be on the 12th. And we will be here live to sit and listen to Yoshi P stroke our tender ears with all the wonderful, wonderful things that are to come our way in the next big Final Fantasy XIV update, as well as World of Warcraft's 10.1 update, which launches in a little over a week's time. Needless to say, we're busy over here with Project MMO. We're busy, busy, busy with raids and savages and all kinds of things lined up for us. But, as always, the crawlers will persevere. We will crawl on our hands and knees and destroy everything in our path. That is what we'll do. Now, a little heads up, my team, my squad, especially my live audience and our wonderful audio listeners and our YouTube watchers. One of these stories is very, very sad, <laughs> apparently. We might hit you in the feels. We're usually about the fun and the frivolity and the levity uh, that goes on on Drama Time. Everything from ERP to Stranger Wonderful Things. But apparently we've got some sadness. But according to Bex, and we put all the pressure onto our good lady Bex, is that uh, it's well worth a listen and well worth a reading from us. So, I think, just for a moment, perhaps we can put our gavels down. We shall see. We shall see. We can put our gavels down for a moment. Just a momentary drop of the gavels. Uh, and yes, the Guild Wars 2 players, yes, I found the hidden mount. I have the griffin. Uh, I did use the wiki to obtain the griffin, but I did find it naturally. Uh, by apparently I was I had bags with clues in it, <laughs> uh, which I had no idea about. I had a bag that had clues. I had items in my bag that were clues. I didn't use that. I just explored every square inch of the map until I found it, uh, which was my solution to the problem, uh, and it worked out just fine. <clears throat> it worked out just fine to do it that way. Uh, and our star for today's show will be a wonderful man from Ireland. Who is one of our longest lasting supporters of this channel. An absolutely wonderful human being. And emergency services man. Saving lives. Has saved many, many human lives. I'm sure all of them are good people. <laughs> I'm sure all of them are good people. Yet still bought my dream monitor. A little story about our star here, Mr. Sandman Slims. He purchased what I consider to be my dream monitor. He bought it. He bought it. And then... Couldn't be bothered to open the box and left it in a cupboard for seven months. Seven months, he just left it in a cupboard. Because he just couldn't be asked to sort out putting a monitor on a desk. Now, I assume this was done to torment me personally. I believe that was the case. But either way, he belongs in the bowels of hell. It is set up now. He sent me a picture of it. Uh, it is now set up. Yes, it is definitely set up. Uh, <clears throat> All right, 
let's see where this journey takes us, shall we? Let's see where we go. A big good day, mate, to you. We're in from Australia. Okay, I assume, otherwise you're trolling. Good day, mate, to you, preacher, and your cutie, cutie, uwu chat. That's you guys, apparently, the uwu chat. And of course, a lovely hello to the wonderful and phenomenal Bex. Mm. This is a tale I've been meaning to tell for a very, very long time, but for reasons you'll find once this tale is over, it's been tough for me to write. I spend a long time trying to figure out where to begin this story, so the obvious place is where it began for me. I got my first taste of World of Warcraft. We're over in the WoW universe. Vex, can you change the game as we do the stories? It makes more sense, because people who come in for like Guild Wars are like, why are we reading about WoW and so on and so forth. I got my first taste of World of Warcraft back in the early days of Vanilla. Back then, I was 11 years of age. That's legal. You're allowed to play WoW at 11. I only contained one and exactly 0.5 brain cells, but that one and a half brain cells was hooked on this game. I'd first gotten into the game because my dad had found out about it from one of his friends. He decided to show me and my siblings the game, probably hoping we would just shut up. <laughs> That's like giving your kids crack. It really is. That's like, hey, kids, have you heard of crack? Here, try this out. See how that works out. I'm sure it'll be fine. And we all could not get enough of it. We looked to our father for advice on the game. But he was the kind of person where if he didn't know the answer, instead of saying, I don't know, he would give you a bullshit answer. But he would say it with such confidence. Such confidence that you believed it. For example, <clears throat> my dad told us that the easiest class to play in WoW for beginners was a warrior. <laughs> I had four brothers. All of us had warriors. <clears throat> With such confidence in his heart and soul, blessed be my father, he said, warriors are the easiest. They can equip all the armor types in the game and they can use every weapon. So they have a way easier time than anything else. Big true, actually. That is a big, big true. Oh my God, she's here during drama time. She's taking my phone because she knows I'm doing a show and I can't stop her. We're going back now, actually. So you're taking my phone and leaving the house? Oh, find it out where the delivery man is. Bye. <clears throat> she timed that. So as soon as drama started, she came in and yoinked my phone and then is leaving. Okay. <clears throat> my brothers and I would run around all wearing the most bizarre types of armor you've ever seen. <clears throat> And using any weapon that had a higher DPS number. As opposed to slow weapons. Smart. I still remember my brother getting a blue staff of Westfall. Because my dad said that not only did it look awesome. But it also gave intellect. Which would be great for my warrior. If my character was smarter. It would miss less. Genius. He also forbid us from playing Horde. Because that's where the creeps on the internet hang out. He's not wrong, but fuck you, right? Fuck you. He's not wrong, but fuck you. <clears throat> he said they were also the ugliest. And if we played Horde, we wouldn't be able to play together. And he couldn't keep us safe. I want to point out here, my dad never, ever played with us. He got so addicted to WoW, he would stay up all night playing on his own, so he vastly outleveled us and thought what we were doing was dog shit. His addiction was so bad that our stepmother threatened divorce several times. Yikes. That's a yikes. That's a yikes. Now, being one of five children, we only got to play the game for an hour a day. And that was only after all our homework and chores were done. Now, to a kid with a World of Warcraft addiction, this was torture. But we made it work, and me and my brothers slowly leveled. Did you all have your own accounts? I kind of pictured this one account with just all these different warriors on them, with all plebby kid names. 
We relished the small things like our first ever gold piece. Going into the first town and seeing the mounts that we may one day ride. Seeing all the higher levels, inspecting them, and getting so excited at some purple gear. Doing our first dead mines and getting our very first blues was some of the fondest memories I have in any video game ever. I'd like to also note here that Dad made us slash salute any level 60 player we saw because in his words it was how new players showed respect for the journey they had gone through on one of the hardest grinds in video gaming history i mean <laughs> these were his words to me wow the casual game when it launched <laughs> I still cringe to this day thinking back on my first ever time visiting Stormwind and the amount of 60s I had to bow and salute made my poor tiny hands hurt. But sometimes those level 60s would bow or salute back and I felt like a god that I had been recognized by these powerful players. I couldn't wait to get to 60 so I could see all the other people bow and salute to me. Hmm... <laughs> <laughs> oh dear <laughs> why lie to your kids man about this kind of stuff because that now they're definitely going to find out now then i think to your audience i probably established that my dad was a newbie dumbass and being that we were only allowed to play for one hour a day we all quickly found a way around this we would watch him play and any time he wanted to go out and have a dart, he would let one of us continue playing his character until he was done. Smart dad. Usually this was continuing a quest or running him to the next town, but those precious extra minutes where we got to hold the mouse and touch the keyboard, oh, they were great. And due to the fact that he didn't want to fork out more than one subscription, he got sick of sharing his account with us dad made us all play on a private server oh daddy daddy uh, to be fair that would be six accounts right there's five brothers and the dad that is six accounts that that gets pretty expensive real quick it does it gets very expensive pretty quick i don't think that's cheap if you've got like an average income that's a lot of money per month that you're paying out on video games. It's a lot. Now, this server, Mike, was awful. And to this very day, I have a fear of World of Warcraft water. Upon entering Stormwind, you would be greeted by the meaty thwack of a skull-level Hydra slapping you with one of its appendages. A Hydra that was bigger than the statue, so there was no avoiding it. In order to go into Stormwind itself, you had to first corpse run several times before the Hydra would be out of range. I'd also like to mention that the graveyards were bugged on the server. So anytime you died, you would be defaulted to the only working graveyard in the game, the East Vale Logging Camp graveyard, and make you run from there. Where's East Vale Logging Camp? Isn't that in Stone Talon Mountains? East Vale Logging Camp. Isn't that Stone Talon? Also known as the Eastvale Lumber Camp or Eastvale Camp is a series of lumber mills. Oh, it's in Elwyn Forest. Under the very shadow of Red Ridge Mountains north of the main road. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that fucking sucks. Oh my god, that's terrible. There were many, many bugs on this server. Oftentimes you would see a skull level wolf in an area it shouldn't be. Sometimes a dragon would fly out from nowhere and kill you. On more than one occasion, I was murdered by a no-clipping device pillager while I was minding my own business in Goldshire Inn. It sounds like you didn't level very far. You seem to have done your entire private quest journey in Stormwind and Goldshire. That seems to be it. I still remember waiting endlessly for the last kobold to respawn for a quest because the mobs were so bugged that only one of the mobs would spawn in the Fargo Deep Mine. And yet you still did the quest. Hey, bravo. Bravo to you. That's incredible. That's pretty good. Just one mob respawning over and over again. One time, I broke the server rules and my dad's rules and made an orc. 
Upon my first time leaving the starter zone, I was greeted by two skull-level red dragonkins, one of which one-shot me with a fireball so large it filled my screen. To this day, every time I close my eyes, I still see that burning stone flying towards my eyelids. I was so traumatized that I all f 4 and deleted the character before my dad could find out. I did not touch a horde character ever again until WoW's Legion expansion. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Eventually, over time, our dad gave us our own accounts. For our birthdays, he gave us a copy of the game, which came with a free month, and he told us that the game was our own problem and never failed to offer us tedious chores for our monthly subscription cost. That's fair. You worked. You earned your subscription. That's totally fair. Of five of you, that's totally fair. That is absolutely fair. I will never forget cleaning every single window inside and out of a five-bedroom, three-bathroom, three two-story house. All right, flex. Oh! Oof. Oh, hold on. Hold, hold, hold. He cleaned every window inside and out in a five-bedroom, three-bathroom, two-story house. My dad gave me five dollars. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> dad daddy <laughs> five dollars oh jesus fuck oh. <clears throat> pull yourself up by your bootstraps kid <laughs> five dollars emma if we got the kids to clean every window in our house how much do you think they would get for that as a chore to clean every window, to clean every window. A hundred quid? You would give the kids a hundred quid to clean the windows? Yeah, come on, we can That's why you don't get to keep the fucking bank card. A hundred quid? A hundred quid? That's like four times as expensive as a window cleaner who's a professional. A uh, hundred... How about a tenner? There's not that many windows. <clears throat> oh, no. Danger money? Danger money. Okay, so now I'm having a fight with my wife over this story. Thanks, pal. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Once we had our own accounts, though, <laughs> Dad let us create something other than a warrior, as none of us could ever level past 15. We would never make it past Westfall. And to this day, I still get a surge of anxiety seeing those ugly harvest golems. I think there was a study recently... Wasn't there? Because everyone's playing hardcore classic WoW at the moment. It's very popular. I'm pretty sure Westfall has 5 out of 11 of the deadliest enemies in World of Warcraft. It's something like that, right? Uh, number 1 is Murlocs. Yeah, on, according to the statistics of who's died to what, I think it's Defi yeah, Defias Pillagers, uh, Murlocs, and Golems have killed more players than raid bosses and anything else. An absolute nightmare zone. Fucking teach you to play Alliance. <clears throat> One of my bros made a mage, another made a rogue, I made a pally. I loved this paladin. I still have it today. Being a pally and having an absolute moron of a father. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. We're really belittling dad today. He had told me to put all my talents into holy. All right. Yeah, okay. Your dad's a fucking moron. Like, yeah, I get it. Your dad is a fucking moron. But, like, <laughs> you're telling all the strangers that your dad's a fucking moron. He told me to put all my points into holy because one day you'll need a group. And this makes it easier to get groups. Being a kid and not knowing any better and obviously wanting to play with other people one day, I followed his advice and good God was leveling hard. <sighs> By the time I made it to level 20, I'd frequently heal myself two to three times per single mob. Leveling was slow and tedious and dying was frequent. I remember being around level 40 and waiting one to two minutes between pulls so I could pull with divine shield. Otherwise, it was impossible for me to kill anything. <laughs> now, that's a journey to go on. See, I'm doing Project MMO right now, but I will never have a journey like that. 
I will never have a journey like that, my friends. For all that, I still didn't even manage to get into groups because the consensus on my server was Paladin's a dog. And of course, no other Paladin actually played Holy at that level, so no one ever invited me. Ah. But I stayed holy. I fought through the pain. Because the one gold respect cost was too expensive. That one gold could buy me almost two pieces of gear from the auction house. It was too big a sacrifice to make. By the time I actually made it to 60, the Burning Crusade had come out and I was still well behind the curve. But I did it! I reached level 60. I remember I sit in the character select screen and look at the level 60 number. And feel like a god. Thinking of that if TBC never came out. I could have been a raider on this character. But alas. The Burning Crusade was out. And I had 10 more levels to go. Okay. We have a darkest twist. Which we probably should have seen coming. Around this time of hitting level 60. Mum won custody rights over us. And dad was no longer allowed to see us. I was fine with this. Because, and I remind you all, this was, as a youngster, my mum let us play WoW more than our dad did. Through the lens of a child. Through the lens of a child. Uh, understandable. <laughs> understandable. With dad out of picture and being allowed to play WoW more... I finally joined a guild to call home, which, as I remind you, Dad thought all the creeps were hanging out. All right, son. Watch out for creeps on the internet, yeah? Okay. All right. Well, to be honest, it was more of a halfway house guild. My first guild was when I joined only due to my e-boyfriend begging me. Oh, no, you found an e-boyfriend in a guild so quickly? Oh, my sweet Jesus. Now... I need to sidetrack the main story a little bit here to explain another story of those days. Back when I was around level 30 while questing, I ran into this guy called Decadence, who played a night elf druid. We teamed up and did some quests together and added each other to our respective friends list. He had a much different life to me and was allowed to play whenever he wanted, so he outleveled me. But being a thirsty teenager... He always came and spent hours helping me quest where I logged in after school. He was only a year older than me, and it wasn't long before we started e-dating. It's important to mention here that since my first voyage into the world of cyberspace started when I was an 11-year-old girl, I'd met my fair share of creeps. Dad wasn't entirely wrong. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm not even joking. When I say the early days of World of Warcraft were filled with them. I frequently had my block list full of people who were being gross. Ugh. As a kid, I understood what was going on from a young age. And as such, I'd learned to not only lie about my gender, but also my age as well. Christ. I'm just trying to level a holy paladin. That's all I want. So. Decadence thought that 14 year old me was actually 16 years old. And him being 15. <clears throat> At first, of course, he thought I was a guy. But when I revealed that I was a girl, well, you know, things sort of progressed from there. I want to be absolutely clear to the audience, though. Oh, Decadence. I'm so sorry. We're going to have a nice dinner tomorrow, Decadence. <laughs> I never had any feelings for him, ever. Now, I do... <laughs> I feel bad about it now that I'm older, <laughs> but I really did use him constantly. Knowing how thirsty guys in World of Warcraft, or games in general, and learning that from a very young age, I of course used it to my advantage. <laughs> Decadence was just one of six guys that I was e-dating at once. You were fucking 14 years old, e-dating 14 losers. <laughs> <laughs> you were 14 years old with a fishing pole like come here woo any gold any gold anybody who's got the gold any mounts any mounts come here Whoppa! throw that one back he's got no money throw it back 
I got free carries through dungeons. Any quests I was struggling with. But I have to say, managing my six e-boyfriends was exhausting. And what I had a different age and story for each one of the boyfriends. And it started to feel like a job. But I did make a lot of gold. And it worked out very well. Did you have to have a notepad or what? I mean, girls, how do you do this stuff? I don't know. I have no idea. Do you have to have, like, profiles? Fucking different MySpace set up for different people? Like, this is mine. Do you call all these different names? I bet they're all, like, stripper names as well to keep them going. My name is Kendra or something like that. Most of my early days in WoW were spent catfishing and dumping dude after dude after dude once they had served their purpose and run out of gold. We're making a monster. We're making a monster. I'd gotten really, really good at it. And I always had the best gear money could buy. I remember that Decadence, just before I dumped him, Bought me my epic paladin mount. Which was about 5,000 gold. <laughs> and one of the best plays I ever made. Was that I convinced all five of my e-boyfriends. To do my Str Sholomans quest. Whispering them all each way through the dungeon. And stringing them through it without any of them knowing. That they were all also e-boyfriends. That's so much work. That's so much fucking work. Hey, respect. <laughs> respect. That sounds like so many plates to juggle, doesn't it? So many plates spinning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's see you back to the main story. I still have Decadence on my friends list, and I joined Decadence's guild. I was a bit of a troll back then, and would frequently stir shit up just for the fun of it. I'd instigate fake fights with Decadence, and then G quit. Sometimes I'd instigate fights with other people in the guild and I'd get kicked only for Decadence to reinvite me. And we did this so often that it drove the GM mad because he didn't know who was doing it. Yeah, I do feel bad about it now, but back then I thought it was hilarious the lengths people would go to to keep me around. I was, in my own words, a menace. Is this Pixie? <laughs> I feel like this is Pixie. Is this your story, Pixis? Oh, it said good day. Pixie is not... Is it you, Pixie? <laughs> it feels like... Doesn't it? It sounds like it's Pixie. Eventually, if it wasn't for the Australian star, I would definitely suspect this is Pixie's story. <clears throat> Eventually, I chilled out over time. And it was around this time that I met another guy in the guild. And his name was our titular star, Sandman Slims. I want to state this now. Sandman Slims was never creepy or weird to me in any way, shape, or form. He was an angel and had the patience of a saint. Since Sandman Slims was well aware of my trolling antics, he also knew about my tendency to catfish myself to many people, and he thought it was funny how many simps were out there. Sandman Slims was also a pally, and after hearing about me complaining about how hard it was to quest in Outland, he became my paladin mentor. He took me to get dual spec... <laughs> Paid for by decadence, of course. <laughs> I want to point out, I have never seen this phrase before. But it's both disgusting and hilarious. I'm going to have to copy-paste this. Oh, I can't because um, of our word version right now. Uh, E-mule. E-apostrophe mule. Kindly funded by my E-mule decadence. An E-mule. That's what you are. You're an E-mule. <clears throat> And showed me what talents I should be using. He explained that Rhett was better than Holy for leveling. <laughs> Gave me a blade to start my journey. He also told me what stats I should use. As my gear was a mangled mismatched of mess of whatever looked the coolest at the time. And was the most expensive of the auction house that I had convinced people to buy me. After respecking and regearing, I took myself back to Outland and was gobsmacked at how much easier this game was. Finally, I killed things without needing Divine Shield. It was like a whole new game had opened up to me. Decadence's guild did end up falling apart, though, due to some issues that happened with the officer team, which actually had nothing to do with me. And Sandman Slims was quick to make a new guild to rehome all of the refugees from the old one, and this included me. 
It was also around this time that I'd left Decadence. He'd gotten too clingy and was getting annoyed to deal with, and he had run out of gold, so he needed to go. That's cold, man. <laughs> that is fucking cold. That is cold. <clears throat> The, de <laughs> the decided. <laughs> this is so sad. <laughs> oh, this is really sad. I'm about to read you something really sad. <clears throat> the deciding factor of me dumping decadence was that he revealed to me that he had gotten an after school job. And had spent all summer saving every penny to buy a plane ticket for him and his mother to visit me in my state and see me. I had no intentions of ever letting that happen. He was actually the last person I'd ever catfished and left broken hearted because that conversation was kind of rough. And in my typical fashion, I just said, No, I don't like you. I broke up with him. Now, I'm not too proud of this now, but I'll be honest. Back then, I thought it was funny. <clears throat> but it gets worse, Mike. Oh, my God. This better not be you, Pixie. <laughs> oh, you're banned from PreachCon. <laughs> you are banned. I knew, of course, after he told me this, I was going to dump him. But I figured I should probably get whatever he has left before I tell him. I convinced him to swap gold with me. I honestly don't remember how he even fell for it. I think because we'd done it before in the past, and I'd always repaid the gold. But this time, I didn't. His last amount of gold was 11k. He was good at playing the auction house and had spent months getting as much gold as he could to support me. So he swapped 11k with my measly 100g, as he knew how to make money and I didn't. And not only did I keep his gold... But that, as soon as he traded it, that's when I dumped him. Then I blocked him. And then I said he'd been creepy towards me and got him kicked from the guild. <laughs> Mike, this is for you. After retyping what I did, I still think it's pretty funny. Ha ha. This is so dark. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. Look, only after retyping it, it's pretty funny still. <laughs> I'm not making this. I haven't had to ad lib this story at all. <laughs> it's fucking brutal. Oh my god. Okay, let's go forward. In the new guild, things quickly progressed and soon enough, they were all raiding and doing dungeons together. <clears throat> I'd been playing much less frequently due to the demands of high school. I should mention here that everyone in this guild thought that I was now 17 years old, when in reality, I was 15. I eventually took a break for a year or so, and by that point, Wrath had been released. I logged in and was shocked to find that all of the original people who had migrated to Sandman's guild, as well as Sandman himself, were still playing. And better yet, they all remembered me. I logged into a flood of welcome backs and whale comes and all those, and to this day, I've never felt happiness like that since. To be remembered after everything I'd done in a fond way was so nice. I now actually legitimately was 17. But the guild still thought I was two years older than I really was. So eventually, I had Sandman Slims and some others asking me about uni and what I was going to study. Well, I had to keep the lie going. So I partially lied and said that I was working and that I wasn't sure what I was going to study. I actually did have a job and I really didn't know what I was going to study at uni. But I was also still in my final year of high school. <laughs> I confided privately to Paul, or to Sandman Slims, that I didn't know what I wanted to study. And in fact, I had no idea what I'm doing or where I'm heading with my life at this point. He replied that he felt the same way. But told me that if he had ever gone to uni, he wanted to study something that would make a difference in the world. He wanted to help people. 
I told him he should do it and that I thought he'd be good at it. He thanked me and told me to keep my chin up, that my direction in my life would come and not to rush it. He said it just take things slow and enjoy the little things. There's plenty of time in your life. We've got long lives to live. The statement still resonates with me a lot. I had a lot of catching up to do. So with my newfound fire, I powered my way through the Burning Crusade content and started Wrath. I had actually grown another brain cell in my time away, so I wasn't as stupid as I used to be. And I actually leveled to 80 pretty fast. My guild and Sandman Slims helped gear me up pretty soon. I was raiding with the rest of them. We'd hang out in vent, talk shit most of the time. And even after raids, most of us would still stick around and chat about our lives. During one of these chats, a few of us were doing our daily heroic. And I found that Sandman Slims was in his early 30s. Being still a kid, I asked him if he was married and he had kids. Sandman told me that he wanted kids but he was, and that he was asexual. And it was there that I learned what asexuality was. I believe that that was what I was too. At least that was until I'd gone into a sleepover at my friends and I all made out as a joke. And then I realized I was a full-on raging lesbian. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I think I'm asexual. Oh my. <laughs> well, there it is. We found it. Oh, it took all that time. No, well, we'll be at this point. 17. That'll do it. <clears throat> this really put my uh, my little e thotting days into perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Sandman Slims was the first person I confided in and confessed my homosexuality to. And he was the first person to give me nothing but support and acceptance. He also helped me get the courage to tell my family. He told me to keep my chin up and be brave. So I did and I was lucky. My family didn't give a shit and they've always supported me. Do I know who this is? Bex. This is all starting to sound very familiar now. I think you do. You don't know. I think I do know who this is. It all falls into place. It all falls into place. I, I can be happy it's not Pixie. <laughs> At one point, I'd also confided him a little bit about some things that I'd gone through. He listened without judgment and told me to keep my chin up. That things would get better and I'd find a path eventually. Things were good for such a long time, guys. Our guild was progging through wrath with ease. Together we became the champions of the tournament. We took an age-old god deep inside Ulduar... And as once as as one, we defeated a fallen king and saved Azeroth from apocalypse. I was an aspiring author, and I loved writing story. Oh, that's her real name. Yeah, I don't know her real name. And her other name isn't that. I don't know her real name. She didn't tell me her real name. I think she's been to Breachcon. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, <clears throat> as an aspiring author I loved writing stories I'd share ideas with Sandman Slims bless him and his patience he'd listen and encourage me to keep going he'd always say that one day he couldn't wait to have a personal signed copy of my book to put on his bookshelf one time I was hanging out in vent writing and I thought I'd muted myself I have a tendency when I'm writing to read out paragraphs to see if they make sense as spoken as well as written well, my mic wasn't really muted and the whole guild heard me tell them a little story. Somebody has made fun of me and I was mortified. Sandman, though? He sent me an in-game letter and told me to keep going. I still have a copy of the in-game letter he sent me to this day. I keep it in my inventory right next to my hearthstone. He also whispered me and said to ignore the people who were mocking you. He said there's always people going to get you down and send TTSs about rats. But that you got to keep your chin up and do what you love. He reminded me that I need to stick with it because you can't have a signed copy of my book if I never write it. Jokes on those idiots in my guild because I am now a self-published author. I'm nothing noteworthy and honestly the whole thing has cost me more money than I've earned. But at least I can say that I did it. Sandman Slims always believed in me and I did it. I got that book out there. Slowly though, Sandman Slims has been logging on less and less. I missed him a lot. I asked him once why he'd been disappearing. He told me he's found himself a lady. And after killing the Lich King, he felt as though his wow journey was at an end. He never failed to tell me to keep my chin up every time he logged in, though. Eventually, he logged in for the last time. He made me an officer a long time ago. And I was doing my best to keep the guild alive. 
But there was only so much an officer can do. It was sometime during the beginning of Cataclysm where someone had told me that you can put in a ticket and a GM will hand Guildmaster to you if the old Guildmaster has been inactive for a while. So I tried it. I was quite literally in the middle of talking to a GM when Sandman Slims logged on. Out of nowhere. It's as if something in the fates or the stars of the cosmos have aligned at just the right time. Still to this day, I wonder how on earth that even happened. It had taken almost three days to hear a reply from a GM, and he could have logged in at any point. But he logged in while I was right in the conversation. He just sent me a message saying he was quitting. He said that he was moving on with his life with his lady, and he wanted me to have the guild. He told me he wanted me to look after it until he decided he'd come back, if ever. And he wanted me to lead it through as many bosses and adventures as I could. As a final note, he told me to never give up and always keep pushing forward. I promised him I would do all of that and that I'd make him proud. He said he believed in me and encouraged me to keep writing. I said I'd get published one day, you wait. He replied and said that was he was counting on it and he couldn't wait to get my signature. And those were the last words that Sandman Slims ever said to me. The GM told me he saw everything that happened and joked that he didn't need to make me Guildmaster after all. He asked if there was anything else he could do. I remember asking for a famous GM joke. He then teleported me into the middle of the sea and sent me a winky face when I died of fatigue. <laughs> Baller. <laughs> I stuck to my promise to Sandman Slims. I led our guild through three expansions. I raid all of the raid tiers from Kata to Warlords. Unnerved heroic Garrosh as well as the expansion itself broke me and the guild though. And it was during this expansion that I took my very first break from the game. In all this time, Sandman Slims never logged back on. But of course, every day I hoped he would. I heard about his life through two of his real life friends. N and V, they'll call them. They would log in every now and then and say hello and play the most recent expansion for a little while. I'd happily carry them through raids and content and chat to them about their lives and Sandman's lives. Slowly, I learned he'd gotten married. He bought a house. Was planning his future with kids, possibly on the table. His missus also was also amazing. So I was delighted to hear he'd found someone who could truly understand him. He sounded so happy. He was living his life, and I was so happy for him. I took a big old break from the game. I didn't come back until the last few months of Legion. The glory days of WoW. A lot of stories could come out of those final months alone, but that's not relevant to this tale, so I'll save it for another time. By the time I came back, one of my officers had taken the guild from me, and had taken over my legacy set by Sandman Slims. He had actually taken the initiative to organize a raid team to tackle Legion. Sadly, though, it was short-lived and fell apart after just two raid nights. I re-rolled to Horde on a different realm and suffered through the battle for Azeroth. I was ecstatic to hear that Classic was coming and bided my time until then. When Classic released, I sweated it up like a true leg beard. <laughs> I took two weeks off work to play WoW and spent the whole time glued to my seat leveling as fast as I could. I couldn't wait to have a second chance at playing the game right this time. And the best part, that I was able to play it with my brother. Him and I played the entirety of Classic together. We joined the same raid guild, did everything with each other. I was having a blast. And of course, this all reminded me of Sandman Slims and how much he would have loved it. I wondered if he knew that Classic existed. And as if the universe heard my question, one of his friends logged into Battle.net one day. I was in the middle of Molten Core killing Raggy for the first time. The friend sends me a message from Battle.net asking me how I'm doing. My DBM replied for me, saying I'm in the middle of battle. And he asked if now was a good time to talk after he saw we'd wiped. I said, of course it's a good time. How are you? He was silent for a moment and asked again if it was a good time to talk. He said it can wait until the raid is over. And I replied, it's only classic lol. I can talk and heal at the same time, don't worry. It took a while for the reply and I was starting to get worried. It was weird uncomfortable there was an awkwardness about it finally he replied and my heart sank it was not a good time to talk he told me that sandman slims had passed away at that moment we killed raggy for the first time but i felt nothing i was hollow and numb i gotta say it was really weird to see this message coming in telling me that sandman slims was gone and then the auto message from dbm saying congratulations you've killed ragnaros and as if out of instinct, the friend typed congrats. <laughs> you 
Grant's dead. Grant's. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Grant's. Oh, oh, fucking hell. Oh, my God. I don't think... I don't know what you do with that situation. I have no idea what you do. <clears throat> In the Discord I was in, we had 39 people screaming and shouting and cheering in triumph of defeating the Fire Lord. But I was crying. My heart was broken. What should have been a phenomenal memory suddenly became the most heart-wrenching moment. I put, put down my headset, disconnected from Discord, and Alt-F4 the game. I didn't even say to see what the loot was. I DM'd a friend what happened. He goes on to tell me that the day prior, Sandman Slibs' brother had gone to check on him because no one had heard from him in over a week. His brother found him dead on the floor of his bathroom of an apparent heart attack. Where was his wife? <clears throat> the words still echo through my head to this day. All the drugs must have caught up with him. I learned that day that apparently his wife had cheated on him He'd suffered an injury at work around the same time due to the stress of the cheating, and it had left him permanently disabled. He'd become a bit of a recluse and started taking drugs. It wasn't uncommon for his friends and family to go weeks without hearing from him. It had been seven clear days since anybody had found him. I'd like to pause the story for a moment to beg your chat to reach out to their friends if they haven't heard from them in a while. His friend told me that Sandman Slims died believing that no one cared about him. He'd been in a depressive state after everything that had happened and with all of the drugs. Even his friends had stopped reaching out because it had been going on so long. And they regret it today every single day. So please, audience, if you haven't heard from a friend or a loved one for a while, just send them a message. Let them know you think about them. I wish I could have done that for him. And while I'm at it, call your mum and tell her you love her. But back to it. His friend goes on to tell me that they're planning the funeral... And is there anything I'd like for him to tell Sandman Slims for me? And I replied, keep pushing forward and keep your chin up. After the funeral, he tells me it was a beautiful service. He says he wrote a note with my words on it and left it on Sandman Slims' coffin. Ever since his death, I re-rolled my main in Classic and named it after him. Now, whenever I do content and someone's refers to me by my character name, it's like he's still alive. Like he's still here. It's just my way of honoring and remembering him. He will forever be memorialized in World of Warcraft, and I will keep his name alive in Azeroth. I'm not going to lie. I've never been the same since hearing of his passing. It feels like all of my fire for the game died along with Sandman Slims. I hardly touched the Burning Crusade classic, and it's really hard to play through Classic Wrath when it's filled with so many memories of what I had with him. Grizzly Hills is especially hard for me. As him and I would frequently chat while AFKing in the zone with the background music playing as we talked about meaningless shit. The music was what made it his favourite zone. But the memories I have with him, there, is what makes it mine. It has been three years since he died. I still have a copy of my book on my bookshelf, and inside it has my signature with four simple words. Keep your chin up. One day I'll fly down to his state, go to his grave, and I'm going to give that book to him. Just like he always wanted. I want to say thank you for reading my story. I'm sorry that it's pretty dark and depressing. I felt like I needed to tell it though. Leveling through wrath has been a real challenge. And I hope that telling the story will help me move on. And this way at least more people will know of Sandman Slims in some form or another. He was a good man. A kind man. He was there for me. Patient. Good. He deserved so much more out of life. Sandman Slims. I love and loved you like you were my own family. There's a Sandman Slim shaped hole in my heart and I don't think I or Azeroth will ever be the same without you. To you and your chat preacher, keep your chins up. I believe in you. You've got this. And I'm proud of you. With all my love, the author. The end. Well, you should know that Sandman Slim's legacy will be remembered, certainly by everybody here right now and everyone listening to this. And everybody who will go forwards. But that was a tale and a roller coaster. We thank you for sharing your story and getting through it. And I hope you feel better sharing it. I hope you feel much better sharing it with a lot of people. And remembering there are some really fun times in that story. 
And you shouldn't feel all sad all the time because it's the fun stuff you should remember. Something I remind myself about when I think about my dad is I don't just remember the bad stuff. There was a lot of fun in there too. So you got to remember it too. So chin up team. And let's have another fun. Love and respect everybody. <laughs> Love and respect everybody. Yeah, that's a good one. I think we'll... Uh, I think we'll leave it there. I think following it up with a really silly story is probably a bad idea. And it's only usually eight minutes before the end. So we'll have a slightly shorter one today. But big hearts, let's follow our author's message. If you've not heard from somebody in a while, I've had people die who I've gamed with. It's been horrible. Uh, it's So send a message. Say hi. Even them old players you love playing with who've been around for a while. If you're only about on it, send a message. And hopefully we shall have a stream on Sunday. Uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Fingers crossed. Uh, I should be around on Sunday. But tomorrow is filming day and dinner with a friend, uh, which I'm very much looking forward to. Next time I meet Paul, I've got to tell him to keep your chin up. Uh, yeah, I should send him a message because he might get a lot of messages from people <laughs> about that. Uh, he should have a lot of messages. Uh, not for sure, not for sure, but we'll see. We'll see. My family goes away tomorrow. Indeed, indeed. But ladies and gentlemen, that will be the end of drama time for today. The end of drama time for today. So if you want some more fun stories, I have two more in front of me that were more fun than that, but I think that was well worth reading and sharing. Uh, send them into drama at preachgaming.com if you've got your tales to share with us, all right? So be awesome, be good, and I will see you all at the very least on Monday when the raiding will pick up, all right? Be good. See you later, guys.